Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to Nigeria Esports. Carrying on with the tournament on ground on the route to Riyadh 2024. Glad you guys could join us here for this wonderful evening, this wonderful series of matches that we're going to have here tonight. And let's get into the fixtures first of all. Rip and Kill always is the two as the first match. We've got Darkstars Esports versus Dark Banishers as well in second place. And then for the final match, we have Raiju versus Ecstatic. So these are the fixtures that we have for tonight. And um, a brief recap of yesterday's games, they were a series of very, very interesting. We saw Shadow Riddles going up against the Zodiacs with Zodiacs taking the win. Then Alpha Zeros went on again against his Alphas to take his Anagi Alphas off the you know, leading streak and giving them one win. And then Outwit Esports as well took a win over Boroin Kenshi. And that was as good as it at yesterday's games though. Today's matches hopefully should be interesting as well and we're just going to wait for the whole gameplay to get set up and we'll be joining the drought phase real quick. Once again, thank you guys for joining in. Any information you need is available on Discord and all social media platforms. Do well to follow, like, subscribe and do this stuff. Right, so before you all and of um the recent updated matches as conclusion of yesterday's games group a we got it coming in first place with two wins followed by oasis zodiac and shadow raiders shadow raiders are the, is the only team they are left to get a single win at all group b has alpha zeros in top spot with two wins outfit esports in second izanagi alphas in third and ruin kenshi in group c has rnk in first dark banishers Dark Souls in third and then Oasis D2 in fourth position. And then group B, Raiju and El Cartel dragging for first and with one win respectively. And then Fake was taken and Ecstatic both with one losses each. So it's a very, very tough situation here for at least group C and group D. Those teams are really going to battle it out a lot. First ban, still making decisions. So on the left, reap and kill, on the right, races D2. Time to drop the beat of the flash. Joy, straight up, good ban. Versatile hero. Strong on both EXP and jungle. Just what's the ban? We're talking about bans. We've seen a lot of you know common bans. Most of the heroes that have been banned out a lot. Talking about let's take a look at the jungle rules. We're talking about Barat, Sergeants at some point, Martis. There's some notable bans, but I think it's pretty tank meta. So we have a lot of tank bans as well. Talking about Tigreal, Minotaur. Those are 82 tanks have been banned a lot actually and the rest of them just a couple of marksmen everywhere Ixia, some Nathan there. bands Xbo Xborg, yes Xborg is one of those heroes who have been banned Lilia, I'm just going to mention that Lilia too is one of those mages that has also been banned in literally almost every day almost every game that we've had tournament started it's been <laughs> a Lilia ban Firmis is to trick the reaper it's my way or the highway the xia ban i can't deal with her today Shinra gonna take to close out the first half of the drafts, first band phase. Who 
Hoot. Horology is my craft. Diggy Your is my team name. Is picking. Oh. And Diggy Bomb for third. The most banned so far in the tournament so far. Samsung Lane Gaming is Valentina. Okay. So we may be expecting a Valentina pick here from Oasis D2. First choice there is Vexana. Just good. Heavy crowd control. Decent damage I, output. Minotaur will finish off what was left undone. I've been waiting. So it's Minotaur so over Tigro. Minotaur over Tigro. And then the tank killer herself. It's this carry vengeance meta. Someone give me a breakdown of how it works because I can understand Cloud being one of those marksmen that has to get deep into enemy backline and deal out as much damage with the blazing duet. But carry, carry has to make intention. So having vengeance on her still seems funny to me. Azura is going to be playing Ruby, while Trevor is going to be playing Nathan. Sometimes I just feel like Carrie is better off with a different spell, you know? They inspire, increase the increase the attack speed, or maybe hey, even purify if enemy has heavy crowd control. Ages to go long. Vengeance. Vengeance is not exactly something to take on her though she goes hybrid build with the thunder belts very very op on her farsa so it's not valentina but farsa mm, that, actually her range is not as but just imagine carry with that wide range that other marksmen have should be absolutely deadly but of course Munta will always find a way to make her fit into the meta probably give her enough on the damage output an akai ban that might be the first time the first time we've seen an akai ban Kindness is the surest path is to ruination. The much contemplation and weighing in the odds. RNK realize Yuzhong is probably the ESP, uh, <coughs> ESP leader that will give uh, will give them a hard time so Yuzhong that out. Nathan melts carry. Nathan melts a handful of marksmen. Really. Nathan melts a handful of marshmallow, but without vengeance, you have to be careful. Plus, it's carry tank. Or oh, carry hybrid. Thunder belts, endless battle. Then move some attack at like window, wind talker. Hello, my friend. And then Malefic Rod and finish everything off with another defense item. Depending on what the enemy has. That SS ban was a bit unexpected, but it still goes a long way. I might not be elated, man, but I do know my truth. And if that SS ban is targeted toward RNK, is is one of the Roma he really enjoys. I'd have to say he's very good on SS. Barats, yes, very very. Good. I'll say it again. That Barats is. Just take Assassin Emblem and then build tank and you still have a decent amount of damage output. Especially if you take War Axe. That's all you need. I 
Angela Ban better. You see, the thing here is that Oasis D2 knows that RNK Ace will never play Angela for any reason. <laughs> RNK Ace has literally sworn on his life that he will never play Angela. Faith, you know from experience. <laughs> but you see Estes, when the chance present, when the opportunity presents itself, you always take Estes. Unless I could be proven wrong tonight. But there's a lot of rumors that Ace can take if he's even the one. Yeah, he's the one roaming. Shinra is gonna be playing Frederick Jungle. Frederick Jungle is very OP pick. Florian Band is all supports right now. Uh they can I can say they're they're worthy to be banned. I won't be surprised if I see a Rafaela pick. Rafaela or Mathilda. Mathilda is still open as well. Rafa, Mathilda, Florine, Kaja. Mina and Fred Combo is indeed going to be a pain. So I hope RNK know what they're doing with this draft that they have. They've got damage, they've got crowd control. But Oasis D2 has. A very solid front line giving ample opportunity to farsa to shine this is looking more like a farsa carry you know they're trying to build and putting farsa in a very comfortable position to just stand and spam that feather death strike all that's left is the esp lane for oasis d2 might be seeing the terizla or lapu choice Most likely going to be Teresla. I don't see a better option. If you could play Lapu, it would have been okay, but Teresla still goes a long way. It's tanky, has good engage. Always it just has a very, very tanky lineup. Right? Go well for them in the long run. While having the tank killer herself. RNK. RNK's draft is okay as well. Let's see how well they hold out against Oasis D2. Oasis D2's frontline solid tanks. Basha would have been better than Lance. Mm, maybe. But Lance is going to be useful in catching Farsa, at least. Ah, Kalines. Okay, I'm not explaining that that is underrated. <laughs> Yo, minions? <laughs> was it Oasis D2 actually? I don't know so much where they lost, the team lost because minions, influx of minion waves, but... It's all good. Buffs or jungle. The jungle has really need that much assistance. Lance is almost done anyway. The first fight might be for this lethal. Kaja is going to be. Staying with Nathan for a while, forcing Carrie to pop the vengeance. Let's see what's going on on that mid lane there. Now Slot's not even going to bother for the lethal, giving it free away to Fredrin. He will be hanging around with Nathan for a while. Ruby taking a lot of damage from that Terizla. Yeah, execution really matters. You can get a good draft on paper, but if you guys are not able to make the most of that draft, it's gonna be hard. Lancelot, I just thought he was going to go in for that Farsa, but up clear the minion wave, give chance to Vexana to roam. I saw someone flicker just now, that's Kaja. Oh, 
We're gonna engage here. Fredrin gets the first blood on Nathan. And he's gonna have a very, very hard time catching that far side and carry through. Because he'll first have to go through Minotaur, then bypass Terizla before meeting Fredrin, and then catching carry or Farsa good zone in here from this solid tank once law went in looking for an opportunity he has a better death strike now forced his ultimate to get away but he won't be successful goes down to Fredrin Fred already looking good too soon. Nathan might be in some trouble here. One very good way to actually deal with tanky jungles is Marksman Jungle. Although uh, at this point there are only two Marksmen you can take. Or even uh, Eastern Shin doesn't go well. In my experience though, I've seen Granger jungle goes well against Marksman. It's be hard for, for them to catch. Minot is gonna get picked off. Better shot once again from Farza. Looking for Kaja. So Fred is not joking. Lancelot tried to engage from the back looking for Farza. So far, Carrie has been able to complete her corrosion skite. Already in position for turtle number two, Lance with War Axe. Anything people still build War Axe on Lance a lot. Yes, Barat was banned. I keep banned him. Fredrin just have carry to push that wave, give her opportunity to rotate it. Is <coughs> 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 engaged. First total, second total now falls over to RNK. They get a kill for that. Lancelot looking for Fredrin. Falls into a safe spot. But I think Kaja's gonna go under that tower. They really want to get their hands on Fred. Not sure Kaja will survive that. Nope. But was that worth the trade? Was that worth the trade? I guess so. Total taken, secured by RNK. So it's one turtle on both teams. And one turtle as well. RNK won that fight. Isla really giving Azuri a hard time on this ruby. Second, they looked almost like Minato was AFK. Assassin is more exciting to watch. True, true. But for the players, it's more about how they can win. Whatever works for them is what they're at least going to try and run with. Ruby, Nathan, swap lanes. Oh, 
we're gonna have a fight. Yes, we are. Ruby staying in front. Everybody, is she gonna get picked off? Not really. She is doing a good, good job at zoning. Good all there from Kaja. I'm gonna go in with the execution. Vexana follows up. Mirator now with the middle on range. Turtle secured by Lance. Double kill for Nathan. Carrie's gonna get a kill on Nathan for the revenge. But will Kaja go down? Ever so slightly survived. Ah, nope. Why do you have to go back? One turtle, three kills. That looks good for oh, Lancelot, though. Ah, he was so close. Popped the Feather Death Strike just in time. So I saw Duke somewhere securing the Demon Hunter Sword. So I'm guessing it's a Trinity build carry. Very, very standard, yes. Then probably the Thunder Belt has like a fourth item. Maybe. Lance doing well. Lance is doing well. Not much going on on the map now. Lancelot might get caught off here between Carrie and Fredrin, and he might be in trouble. Do we have an engage here? Not yet. Pokes. Ins and outs. That's what really looking for the first lord. Let's see if they're willing to take that risk. I think Lancelot is actually. The fact that Nathan isn't here to assist is a little bit worrisome, but they're not too far away either. Forced to reset it. Mexana is really dealing a lot of damage. Both sides just playing objectively, not committing too much, just waiting for something important to pop up before they commit full time. Last lot, paying attention to Farsa's positioning. This is like the third time now that they've attempted to start Lord, and you're gonna get Minato taking down Feather Death Strike from Farsa to force a fight. One player down, but you're not done yet. Lancelot now trying to get, get away from Killing spree for Anna as she takes down Mina uh, Teresla. So it's a 3v5 situation. I'm not really sure what is going to go through with this. I am angry there from Ruby. Lancelot. That might be. Oh! Those dashes were well timed. Got Farsa under the tower, dashed out in time, and now they're gonna have a free lord. Will Fredrin get taken down though? Safety of his turret. Kyrie! Yeah, that was, uh, that was very, very close to being a, you know, an epic Kyrie moment. Golden Staff carry. And oh, Blade Ammo. Later might be in for some trouble. But nothing too serious as long as there's no Vengeance to combo with it. That combo is usually more scary on Belleric. Ah, when you have Belleric. And then Blade Ammo. 
and vengeance as that's it the maximum player's worst nightmare Bexana and a lot of killings here. Oh, RNK are really looking to end. Minato is going to go in with the middle range and combo that with a the flicker. There's a shutdown on Lancelot. Teresla is coming in from the back. Purify now from Bexana as she tries to keep herself alive. Teresla is off the map. <laughs> One more start to Mythic and then enemy Lancelot. No true words have been said. Like pro lances are actually much more annoying to deal with than almost any other task. Funny, all oh my days. But this game will be ending anytime soon. Aranky still need one more lord at least before they can come close to ending. Otherwise, they have the upper grab, the upper hand, map control, altering still standing. Maybe just one inhibitor now for Oasis. Blade armor is okay. I'm pretty sure he's still gonna build the Antiquirus later on. Skill issues indeed. Less than a minute. Next Lodge. That's as much time as Oasis has to learn what they can do to make a comeback. These are the type of times when you just need somebody to split push. Lancelot, that ult was sus. He might get punished for making such a mistake, but never mind. He has Nathan there to capitalize, who is in the back there. But about to get shot down. Carry gets the kill. Flicker from Terry's that trying to get to his face, but Lancelot. Final execution, looking for a kill, Ruby with a stun. So many things happening, but just no kill. What is Kaja doing? That was that was it. Really expected more though. Is that good what I was saying about that last ult? Focus a lot more on the tanks than on the primary objectives. You know, the squishes in the back line. Last time I've been in some trouble. Yet a five man Lord push. And here come Oasis looking for an opportunity to turn this game around. Lancelot with the professional Reggie. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Take it or leave it. How to retreat Fredrin right there. We're gonna have an engage now from RNK. Massive defense now coming out from Oasis. They are still trying to hold on. Lance forced uses ultimate to get away. Terrisla with the penalty zone. Minotaur's off the map. Who's next? Terrisla will go down, Fredrin is gone as well, Kairi is really dealing a lot of damage but will that be enough? Kaja in the back, triple kill for Nathan, is it going to be a Maniac? Yes it is, that's the third Maniac of the group stages so far and GG's to be a kill. He did use Retri but he was outraged by Lance. Hey, if you can replay it back to where the Lord... Where that the Lord fights, he had Retri available and then was gone. Yes. There's la well there's really not much to be said anyways. Like someone said before, like Oasis had the draft on paper, but the execution became the problem. And now RNK were strong enough to have the MVP there with Vexana. So Congratulations to Week and Kill for winning the first match of the evening. GG's to them. GG's to Oasis for a, a 
a very very wonderful performance. D1 collects D2 collects. Yes, GG to them for a wonderful performance. And um, we'll take a very short break while we get the lobby set for game number two. So don't go anywhere and stay around.
number two. The game of the dark. <laughs> dark stars esports versus dark vanishers. So let's see. Dark Vanishers already have one win to their name. While Dark Souls Esports have one win and one loss. Yeah, one win and one loss. So, they are looking to either pull in ahead of Dark Vanishers now with two wins, or Dark Vanishers will take the win in this one. Once again, the Lydia ban has just become a standard now. If Lilia is in band, then you're not playing. This is a tournament. Barats, too. Horology is my craft. Diggy is my name. Children of Light. Well, I believe these guys have something else in mind. Diggy. Man. Time to drop the beat of the Your flash. Your team is banning. Joy Band 2 is another one that's been very, very common. So, what's the third one gonna be? A lot of people seem to have it easier to deal with Fredrin. He hasn't really been banned a lot until you get to a zero, like the second phase. A minute of ban, yes. Ah, of course, this is where we have Soul Reaper. Don Deep Sea, the Soul Reaper. You'll rip your soul with that Layla. With that Lilia, rather. So safe to just get her off. <laughs> hey, your back team time. is picking. Light me up and your watch team the is world picking. burn! X boy. <coughs> so we've got Ahmed J now playing X. Oh, X boy was left open. That's might be a mistake. Might be costly for Dark Vanishers, but still nothing too difficult. Talking about the tournament, I believe most of you know what we're all about here. You know this, um, the road to Riyadh. Basically, it's the national qualifiers for the team that represent us in morocco and whoever wins if our representatives are able to win in morocco then we get to go to riyadh and represent in the iesf so yes this I've this is a big deal this is a big tournament once again the carry pick with vengeance and then we've got our lot now our lot flicker how many of you know about the alt flicker trick from Arlot? Or is it flicker alt? Is it flicker alt? Or, yeah, flicker alt. Sorry, alt flicker, yeah. Alt flicker, you know. What I mean? <coughs> well, that means it our pick is very, 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 very good. Really make it hard here for Arlot to do anything. To see Ronaldo, I mean, it's not easy, right? It's not easy. It's a big deal. But yeah. Alt Flicker, huh? I mean, it's always Alt Flicker for everybody. <laughs> Only love at night. Everyone does well, that's nice. Cecilion. Hmm. Mm hmm. Strong vampire. Yeah, it's your ban. Fair enough. What are we gonna take out now for Dark Stars? What does what is Dark Van? What are Dark Vanishers lacking? <laughs> to live Fredrin, to uh, Faramis. All right. Well, you glad you could always deal. It was good to have you around. So Tensa Zanka now will be looking to ban something important for, against the Dark Stars. What are they missing? They're missing the Marksman and Rome. Unless um, Minnesota is going to be playing Rome, which I highly doubt. I doubt Minnesota Rome. So we're looking at a possible Rome 
Demon ban? But Marksman, there's really not much you can ban out anymore. Your team is yeah. I'm just kinda leaning towards that. Tigro. Ban Harley. This damage this season is quite scary. Like, it is quite scary. Just two items in hand, you can already one shot. Your team is picking. Ban Eve. Eve. Eve has. Eve's time to shine has passed long, long ago. In fact, you really see players pick Eve now. Even though I don't, I can't remember if they exactly brought back the the buff where they were going to increase, or did it was it enough decrease the range of our ultimates, <coughs> made it significantly smaller than before, but they buffed up the damage and decreased slow duration. You should. Can't even remember. It's been long since I've seen or played Eve at all, and she used to be one of those mages that. Even if you're not a mage main, but you're forced to play something in mid lane, you just easily pick up. You know, she's not too difficult. Decent mobility, good slow, very helpful in team fights. Yeah. Brethren jungle once again. Got drasters now. Oh, ghosts. Got to catch her. Muscle of iron. Of steel. Bless you. Cloud. Are we gonna have Cloud? Come on, Dexter. It's our show yes, we are. So Cloud versus Carry. Gato into Kai, let him cook. Three vengeance spells. This is this is the highest I've seen vengeance in the match. This has to be the highest I've seen vengeance in the match. Clouds we on what paper, please? Well, I mean, if you think about it, though, but I still think Carry best Cloud. Her damage is not something to play with. She has a huge amount of true damage As compared to Cloud. More of attack speed. Cloud more of attack speed. <laughs> <laughs> Only most people, yo. <laughs> Everyone calm down, calm down, yeah? Vidas, calm down. Oh my days. Someone said newspaper. <sighs> that is funny. Cloud Cloud doesn't really do much to, to carry. Carry's damage is not something to play around with at all. You know, the slow, the true damage. Vengeance as well. And her sustainability. In general, she sustains a lot more than Claude, actually. The only thing Carrie is missing is just that range on Nevada Origins. And they know why. And Nevada Master, and they know why they made it like that. No one knows why they made it like that. Because she'd be hell if she had a wide range like all of the maximum. She'd be chaotic. get those logos off screen so we can enjoy the beauty of this dark match thank you very much <laughs> so yes Minsitar room looking to get some vision out now to where Fredrin is
not much action going on early on into the game. The Arlot getting some good dashes out. Carry with the Azuri Bleed. Decent amount of true damage and mana management early on. I believe there's a request for a pause from Gatot. Cloud is AFK for a bit. Just gonna have to wait for the referee's decision. Meanwhile, Dark Souls is we are still gonna try to get, get their hands on the turtle. Gato is coming in now with the ultimate dying. Xbox will be happy to follow through and draw first blood on Fredrin. And that will be the first fight of the, of the match. Free turtle now for Ameji. Good doing from Gatot. Alright, Cloud's back. Well, Kari still gets it farmed, that's the problem. He's able to clear that good outer turrets get the gold from the shield longions yeah funny enough they left eggs were open are yeah, you thinking they were expecting the hanzo pick or or maybe it could have been a mistake just didn't think of it you know sometimes when you're under a lot of pressure especially if you're the team's main um drafter leader there'll be so many heroes in your mind you don't know who to ban but it's usually helpful to just pay attention to what the most bans have been <coughs> and always you know check out the teams you're facing ahead of the match so you guys can quickly get your bans and pick straight now now Forcing Gato to be engaged, him looking for an opportunity, and he will get away with the ultimate. Our lot might be in some trouble here. Oh, yes, he will be. Got taken down by a mid star. Someone has come back and is dealing a handful of damage to carry who's been farming for a while. But he's not too far on level though. Both leveled at level 6. Xbox quickly trying to get his hands on Toro before it could be a contest for it. The outer terrain shield has been dropped. Xbox. able to secure Fredrin's blue buff. Now we're gonna have an engage as well committing full time. And he'll be have to take care of Arlot is still doing some damage. That's a three man sweep. Be clear. defend but there's really not much you can do about it he's lucky that's not even a fighter i would have been one shotted forced to use his heal to keep him alive his ultimate he invaded team with cecilia i mean so far they are leading 2k gold lead and one third two turtles so yeah no matter you from either side just yet but this game is still yet to get interesting still so much that, that can happen try with that hook there from Mincetar it's a very very good engage the sense is lucky does not a lot of heroes to follow up with
Xbox is not done with Cecilia and goes in full time, Fredrin will be shut down before he can even use the ult. Dark Stars are gradually reaching cruise control. Estes is gonna go down to Minstar for whatever reason. Minstar really trying to force Kai to get into trouble, but she was quick to get away. Six kills to three. And a 4k gold lead in favor of Dark Stars. <laughs> Enjoy. Immortality now from X Boy. It's gonna be a lot harder to kill. Really gains mana mana issue. It seems that there's a trick to manage your mana this is in the early game but I'm gonna engage here coming out our lot's forcing with the ult there's Mincitar as well Cloud comes in with a blazing duet but can he really get any damage out Cecilion Feast of the Bats Cloud gets a kill off Fredrin was that a double hook onto carry and Estes it was and Estes will be punished for that Vexana with the kill and Cecilion is the only man standing well played Damn, a lot of dead bodies under that turret. That was a massive fight. I was saying, the trick that I saw, at least to managing Cecilion's mana in the early game, is to spam your skill 2 to the second, I believe, the yellow. When, when it's the yellow color, because the first one is. What's the first one again? It's normal, then yellow, and then blue, and then red. Or is it that way around? But I know you can spam it four times before it gets to purple. So you only stop, do it twice, allow it to reset, and then do it again. That way you get to manage your mana. Late game, well. Oh, Vexana is just not done yet. Force Cecilia to use the Feast of Bats. Minstar got the hook onto Cecilion but forced him to use the Purify. So it's no Purify now for Cecilion for at least 1 minute 20 seconds. Pretty sure Dark Stars can keep their eye on that sex ball going in fast for Lord. I'm gonna take the advantage that they have. Have to be quick about it. Dark Punishers are on to what they're doing. Minstar in good position. There's not getting deleted. He has still been able to maintain impeccable positioning. 0 1 and 4 KDA. Do we have an engage? Flicker from Minstar to stay safe. And alive while they wait for our lord to come down the mid lane. And we will come in now to join the party. Alt coming around everywhere. Minstar goes in. Here's Gatos with the follow up now looking for Cecilion. As well, he is close by and he will as well engage. Esther's massive heal. Fred is gonna go down first. Gatos will go down next. One lord. One torrent, maybe two. Bottom lane there is being zoned out from Dark Vanishers. Cloud is gonna be have to take that one down. Let's just, just now got his flask of the voices. That's some that's an item that you you wanna get as you know first or second slot. The entire midline fell just briefly after the Lord was spawned or was taken. Okay. Xbox could have been punished there. Gato is really forcing that engage now. Esther is picked off. 
at home to close down next. Too much storage damage. Carry brute force breastplates. Oh, that's a good offer, my lot actually. There's a shutdown now to Vexana, Ceslon. Now following through. Ceslon now has the damage. So we're barely getting to that level where he's looking to carry his team and push them forward. Cloud Blazing Duet. Cloud Blazing Duet is barely doing anything. Cloud's Blazing Duet was barely doing anything there. There was just no damage. And that might have been a very, very bad time to engage in that kind of team fight because now they are two man down and Dark Vanishers are looking for any open opportunity to get their hands on that. Enhanced Lord, level 2 Lord. I'm surprised, none of them even went for it. Here's a fight now for the Lord. Engages all around. Who's gonna eventually secure it? Who will die first? Mist has gone. Ceslon on a killing spree. Ceslon gets the Lord. That was insane. Ceslon actually got that Lord. Gatot is in a lot of trouble. Xbox still trying to help, but there's really not much he can do. Carry on a mega kill with a golden star just to kill. Dark Vanishers are beginning to make the combat. They have seen the window they needed. Now they are passing through. Two kills and one lord. That lord is what they're going to need now to at least take down at least three of three torrents from Dark Stars. Even if they don't take anything from mid lane, top lane might go bot lane too if Cloud is not there to defend. was killed before he could even get to that mid lane tier tower mid lane tier 2 tower a good pick up there actually on to carry follow up with the ultimate but here's a heal from Estes there's no dash available Xbox trying to get the kill Dark Vanishers are actually very very tanky there's not enough burst damage from Dark Stars to kill them oh carry gets shot down could this be a, if this is a wipeout it will be the end it looks like it's a wipeout. GG's. GG's to Dark Stars Esports. There's only 20 more seconds left before Harry and Estes come back and try to defend, and there's really not much you can even do. Just look at Xbox. Proudly go winning. I guess that marks the end of game number two, ladies and gentlemen. So, in the game of darkness, there can only be one winner. That is Dark Stars Esports taking over on the group table standings just behind RNK. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Dark Stars Esports takes the win over Dark Vanishers 4 1 and 12 KDA there from Xbox. Good gameplay. Vexana was absolutely amazing. Gatot had wonderful engages. Cloud with a good follow up. I really didn't see much of Cloud's damage, honestly, but it was okay nonetheless. Mintitar Roam was a very, very good way to go. Really caused a lot of trouble there for Carrie, especially with her flick. Uh, yeah, Carrie's dash. It was hard for her to really do much. And that's pretty much all we have for game number two. So, once engages to Dark Stars sports right yes ggs to dark stars esports and um now for the final match of the evening the very very final match of the evening that we have today 
that's going to be between Raiju versus Ecstatic. We're going to join those teams when we get back from this break. Updated rankings. One win and one loss. Oh, okay. So Dark Souls Esports and Dark Vanishers are about the same level. Both teams having one win and one loss. Leaving Oasis D2, the only team to get a victory. Right, so next match, Rise Ecstatic. We're going to join them after the very short break.
but it was real needed, well deserved. So we are back, ladies and gentlemen. The final match of the evening. Reju. Someone said I should pronounce it Reju. <laughs> right. So Reju versus Ecstatic. So on the left we've got Reju, and on the right, Ecstatic. Let's see what these two teams have in store for us. The Diggy ban right off the bat. What's it gonna be? The very first ban now for Ecstatic. For Lip. Guess maybe a mage. Probably a Lilia ban. A lot ban. Okay. <laughs> very unexpected. But we've seen do some good work here this evening. The first two games. One for the Dark Banishers, and then I believe the other was. Oh no, there was no Alot in the first game. Yeah. The last game. Jedi or Jedi Jedi. I might not be I was gonna say Jedi. Barat's ban, okay. That's an okay ban. It's a very very okay ban. Second one now for next type will be B B B B B B B I don't know what to expect. Might be Lilia Pan actually. It is in despair that I see the fondest hopes. Are you working? I cannot promise. I've been waiting for too long. A carry third position for. Rage. And Club Glove. That's a lot of marksman bands. That's a lot of marksman bands there. Where, where are all the major bands? You know, the Tiger, the Minotaur, Sporg. No Xbox band, and we've seen how Xbox was able to push their opponents in the last match against Dark Banishers. Dexbog first. Time to take the field. Bruno pick. Your team is picking. Well, this time we have Tiger. We finally have a Tiger gameplay. It's my way or the highway. was left open. Reju already looked like they have the draft. Reju already looked like they have the draft. Now they need to pick a decent support hero. Something that can. Can fit into the synergy that they have so far. I'm guessing that's an Xbox EXP because I would rather. Betray the world, then let the world betray me. <laughs> All right, so the one we egg the uh, Yuzhong, the one with Yuzhong ban, or Yuzhong pick rather. This time, the choice is mine. Really seen some very interesting bands off here. And Xavier Ban and um, Akai as well. <laughs> Martis. 3,000 worlds. I'm not a single worthy foe.
the last band now for Reju probably have to be a jungle or a mage. Vexana band will be bad here actually. We've seen how Vexana was able to dominate in the first two matches this night. Or maybe even Lilia too. Hope will find a way. Your team is even when all is Vexana band indeed. I'd be surprised if it was anything other than those two. So we've got three marksman bands. Oh. None of them includes Ixia. I'm surprised. Kai wasn't exactly scary. We've seen we saw how Dark Stars were able to handle her in the last match. At some point she was dealing good damage, but it just wasn't enough for them to clutch the win. Online. Alpha jungle. That's good. That's decent, actually. And a combo now with Tiger will really be very, very fantastic. That's set up. Tiger Lords, Jung, Atlas, um, said Atlas, Alpha, Belleric. Nah, wait. Are right, you actually serious about pulling off a better jungle? I didn't cure the pain. Valentina will go I well, go so well here. Lexana's nerf is not enough. She needs more, yeah. I mean, what do you expect from a hero that just got a new skin? A new, a new series, actually, a very, very new series. The Zenith skins. You know how Moonton does these things. When the hero is about to get a new skin, they either buff or you know make some slight adjustments. But then John go OP, really? Well, I'd love to see that. It's gonna be very interesting. But this Valeru will prove very, very troublesome against it. Indeed, they are cooking. Engulfed in flames. Valer pick. Hmm. Pretty sure expecting. It's a hot mage pick there. Just turns out to be Valir. But Valir against Gatot and Belleric is probably going to be very good actually. I won't be surprised. So those are the bands. And the picks, that's the drafts. Let's now head on into the execution, the main gameplay, final one for the night. Reju for the win. So we have a Reju fans in here. All right. Clanishon Clash, Xbox versus Valir. Well said, bro. Mind you that um, Raju are currently topping the table in the group and Ecstatic are at the bottom, so but they each just have one game played. So this will make it to now. One of these two teams will take it now. Either Raiju pulls in now with two wins, or Ecstatic can make a comeback and take the third place on the group with one win as well, joining the cartel. Let's see how it goes. Very interested in seeing it because it's not something you expect. Xbox versus Yujong, though. Yujong has a bit of an easy time taking down Xbox Firaga Amoy. He might go down here. There's value flickering to the back now to get a knock on. 
and they get the first blood forces the flicker now from Xbox. The first blood just might be on that Valir. Yes, it will be. I believe that's the first pause of the game. It seems to be some AFK issues. But nothing we can't handle. So the execution of the draft is what I want to really, really look at and, you know, try and analyze. So people were saying Beric Jungle is OP. I haven't really seen it a lot. So there's room for speculation. But at the same time, having that Gato takes here in Exborg on your own team, alongside Valentina, she can, there's a lot of ultimates from Ecstatic that she can copy. You can take Alpha Zone for you know, engage or disengage, you can even copy the dragon zone. Copying the dragon zone is going to be initial in my opinion because not only does she get just the ultimate, but she gets the entire four skill set. All four of them. The dragon skills, the dragon essence, everything. So it's gonna be very good well dealing with you know Bruno that's hiding in the background. It's just unfortunate that she has purify instead of petrify very very disgusting combo All right so while we fix the pause we'll take we'll be right back we'll take a short break there from Yijong. Ixia and Bruno. I think that's the first time we've seen that matchup. Bruno hasn't really been picked a lot in the tournament scroll. Going toe to toe with Valeric. May not be necessary to do all that. But the first major fight that we're gonna see is probably going to be over this turtle. Gato taking some damage from Valir, Yuzhong, trying as fast as possible to clear the wave. Valir is yet to have his ultimate, yet to be level 4. Tigro too, really doesn't pose much of a threat yet until he gets his ultimate. Missed the knockback from Valeric. Valeric does have his own, so we're gonna have an engage here. Xbox able to secure the total for his team and get the kill in Tigro as well. Our dragon. Well, second dragon. <laughs> We're looking for Alpha there, but not much to worry about. The way Tigress, I mean, two purifies, yeah, it's gonna be very, very hard for him to land any significant combos. He has to be very, very careful with the timing. Valentina already making rotations now towards gold lane, looking to assist Ixia. Tiger is here as well. So they both have to be very very careful. This could end in one of two ways. Free gold. Tagro. The flank from the back. As Gato with the engage. He starts coming with the as well. They're gonna get a kill on Alpha. And that's all that will be needed. Just small, small pickoffs from Raiju to give them three kills and a 2k gold lead. Just three minutes into the match. <laughs> Crow, you understand it, right? Two dragons going on. You don't even know who the original is. But yeah, that's what Vexana's IMU can do.
Xbox might be in some trouble here. Tiger will force to use his ultimate, looking for a chance to break his fraga, and now he'll flicker into safety. Alpha was looking for a chance to ult. And yes, Bruno though in some serious trouble. Valentina did a good job in keeping him in the range of Vix's ultimate, and that was enough to get the kill. Gatot may be a little bit too deep into enemy territory here. Alpha tried to gank but failed miserably. Got punished instead. Gatot, on the other hand, in some serious trouble here, but Valer will go down instead. Raiju are really pushing on. Six kills and a 3k gold lead. You guys were right, this Belarabic jungle is actually pulling in something. Able to tank, able to dish out damage. Looks like we have a new tank jungle meta, guys. So Yishon just got his hunter strike. Nice now on Gatot. The only person that hasn't died yet on Ecstatic is Zhong. Him just being very, very careful. Bruno with the Haas Claw. We've got rotations now towards the top side of the map. Ixia had good instincts there to just reposition and get away. That would have really ended badly. And now Tiger is coming with a conceal, looking for an opportunity. Oh, Bruno is not surviving that at all. So Bruno lost to the X-Borg in... What do we have on this mid lane? Alpha forces ultimate to get safe. Valentina is not done though. It's just all a little bit late. Just a tad bit late. And she doesn't even have flicker on her. Opted for the purify instead. Use Beric now on top lane. Looking to force their way into this turret. Let's take it down. Yuzhong. We will get punished for trying to protect it. Yes, Valeria and Tigru though goes in with the flicker, forces out the purify from Valentina. And now she's looking for Valeria at the back. <laughs> hmm. That. My problem with the Yuzhong Exorcist skin is that. As a dragon, he is very fierce, yeah, nice and cool and everything. But then in the dragonoid form, it looks like this massive chicken. That was just my problem with that skin, but it's okay. Are we gonna have three turtles now for the sides of Raiju? Yes, we will. But it's not literally just enjoying two collector skins there. There's Tiger going down under to Xbox. Okay. Another turret taking down the mid lane. Ecstatic are losing, and they're losing very, very fast. Almost a 7k gold difference now between the right joint and ecstatic. That's a mega kill for Valentina as she takes down Alpha. At this point, you begin to question can ecstatic actually make a comeback?
Xbox might be in trouble if it doesn't get away fast. Once Afriaga goes dumb, nice out. Ecstatic are about to lose their bomb named Tier 2 Torrent to Ixia. While Valentina is just in position now, waiting for whoever will be unfortunate to try and defend. Bellerick easily taking that blue buff. Now forcing out the engages, Gato coming in. Ixia with the follow up gets Valeria off the map. Unstoppable Valentina there, she kills Tigro. Nine minutes in, and we're gonna have the first lord. This is looking very, very scary for Ecstatic. 12 kills to zero in 10 minutes. You would think Ecstatic have a decent draft until you realize that they're not using it very well. I mean, they have a Valir and they're still suffering this much. Not exactly the best gameplay. Valentina for MVP by the end of this match. 5-0 and 5 KDA. But I also love the initiative from Gatot Kata and um, Valeric. The ability to know exactly when to engage. Knowing full well that the enemy has a heavy crowd control tank. That mid lane is barely standing on its own. Just 1% HP. Valer is a hero without damage, you'd be surprised how much damage Valer actually deal. On a good day, Valer can actually, at least early, can go toe to toe with Xbox. Monster kill for Valentina while Alpha is gonna go down. Yuzhong stayed too long in the dragon there and he was taken down just as well. Valer has completed the triad. Oh no, he doesn't have vengeance today, but he does have the Blade armor, so Bruno is not gonna have it easy. But there's really no hope now for ecstatic. This this is the end. Lord still standing strong. No man got taken down. Oh the twins, can they really hold out? Tiger is looking for a five-man engage, but he won't be able to complete it. Gets taken down real quick. This is by far the fastest, most one-sided match that we've seen in the entire tournament, and it goes over to Raiju G G's. This this match almost doesn't even deserve any comments. Like, like what Ecstatic came here to do, I have no idea. This is the first fully bronzed team in this entire tournament. And it's just so unfortunate. But all we can say is what? GG's to both teams. And that will be it for the night. Like I said, MVP there to Valentina. Well, like I was saying, GG's to um, GG's to Raiju yeah, for a wonderful gameplay, taking out Ecstatic in the highest fashion that we've seen so far in this tournament. So that will be it. So once again, the recap of, of all that we've seen here tonight. Th th this one was definitely the most interesting, right? So yeah, Raiju with the win for the last game of the day. And you know, brief recap for the first match: Rip and Kill going on versus Oasis D2. We saw RNK take the win. Dark Stars Esports versus Dark Banishers. Dark Stars Esports came out tops, and finally Raiju with the win for you know the win to seal the day versus Ecstatic. And that's all that's gonna be. A quick look at the group stage standings if they have been updated at least this night. Let's see where everyone is yes raiju holding down their position in top of group d there with two wins el cartel following close with one fake was taken and ecstatic both with one loss each right that is that is it so ecstatic has two losses yeah 
it started with two losses well hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys enjoyed the games and um we're gonna be waiting for the fixtures of day four tomorrow right that are we on day four already day six even yeah day six going into day six tomorrow night so right hope you guys did enjoy the gameplay if you have any questions any needs the discord channel is open you know the social media platforms are there instagram twitter and um even the commentary section here on youtube too is available to uh, help you answer whatever you need and hope you guys enjoyed the matches for this evening we'd love to see you tomorrow same time peace out